Hello, fifth graders. This is the reading of Why Do Scientists Argue? Remember, you can pause this video anytime you need to, and I encourage you to read along as I read. Let's begin. This book is about scientists and why they often argue. If you look through this book, you will notice the pages are two different colors. The green pages tell the story of a scientist who lived in the 1900s named Rachel Carson, and the white pages tell about scientists today. There are three ways to read this book. You can read only the green pages about Rachel Carson, you can read only the white pages about scientists today, or you can read all the pages in order. The book will make sense no matter which way you read it, just don't try to read it backwards. For our purposes, I'm going to read both the green and the white pages. Let's start with the green page. In the 1950s, a scientist named Rachel Carson sat up late at night, writing alone. She had studied ecosystems all her life, observing fish in the ocean, birds in the forest, and many other organisms. She had researched ways that ecosystems were beginning to change, and now she was working hard to explain to readers what she had learned. Some scientists work alone like Rachel Carson, but some work with partners, and others work on very large teams. No matter how they work, all scientists are part of the scientific community. Most people think of their community as the people in their neighborhood or town. This kind of community is connected by the place where people live. The scientific community is spread out all over the world, but all scientists are connected. They all want to figure out how the world around them works. Carson asked questions about ecosystems. She wondered, how do the things people do affect ecosystems? Do the pesticides people use kill insects, also kill other organisms in an ecosystem? Carson decided to investigate to try to find out answers to these questions. All scientists ask questions. They ask questions about organisms, stars, the ocean, the matter, that everything is made of, and more. Scientists share a way of answering their questions too. When scientists want to find answers to questions about the world, they investigate. If a question is very important, many scientists try to find an answer. These scientists may not work in the same place, but they are still part of the scientific community. When Carson lived, it was more difficult for scientists to communicate because they didn't have email or the internet. Scientists mainly communicated by writing books, letters, and articles. Carson read what other scientists had written about pesticides. Pesticides are used to poison insects, weeds, and other so-called pests, living things that can harm people or crops. Many scientists made the claim that pesticides only kill the specific insects or weeds they are supposed to kill, nothing else. They claim that pesticides could not poison other organisms, and so they could not harm ecosystems. By the 1950s, people had started spraying pesticides everywhere they could. Scientists today still communicate by reading and writing books, letters, and articles. However, now they have lots of new ways to communicate. For example, using phones and computers. Scientists from all over the world fly in airplanes to meet with one another so they can discuss the questions they are investigating and the evidence they are gathering to try to answer those questions. Carson didn't think scientists had enough evidence to support the claim that pesticides don't harm ecosystems. She started looking for data about how pesticides were affecting ecosystems. When she looked at data the scienti that scientists had collected about organisms and ecosystems all over the world, she looked at how those ecosystems had changed over time and found lots of evidence that the numbers of organisms in an ecosystem went down after people started spraying pesticides there. The evidence showed that pesticides were killing lots of different organisms, not just the ones they were meant to kill. Carson disagreed with, that, with what other scientists had been saying about pesticides. When scientists disagree, they often argue with one another. Some people see arguing as a bad thing, but an argument means something different to scientists. When scientists argue with one another, it is because they are all trying to figure out the best answer to a question. 
Arguments move science forward. Carson wrote a book presenting her claim that pesticides were harming ecosystems. She talked about all the evidence she had found that pesticides kill lots of different organisms in an ecosystem. Carson explained that the organisms in an ecosystem all interact, so that poisoning one type of organism affects the whole ecosystem. Many scientists disagreed with Carson and kept arguing that pesticides could not affect whole ecosystems. Here's how scientists argue. Scientists get together to talk about their investigations. They share the questions they are investigating and they try to answer the questions by making claims and describing how evidence supports the cl those claims. They listen to one another and ask questions. Sometimes different scientists make different claims about the same question. They may be looking at different evidence or they may explain the same evidence in different ways. They disagree. These disagreements are very exciting for scientists because a disagreement is a chance to figure something out. For Carson, evidence was the most important thing. In science, the best claims is the one that is best supported by evidence. A claim with no evidence is just an opinion. The scientists who argued that pesticides couldn't harm ecosystems only had a little bit of evidence to support their claim. But Carson found a lot of evidence to support her claim that pesticides harm ecosystems. When scientists argue, they talk about different claims and how well the claims are supported by evidence. Arguing helps scientists understand one another's claims and evidence better. Sometimes scientists change their minds and decide they agree with a claim they disagreed with at first. Changing your mind can be hard, but it means you are learning something new. Over time, the evidence Carson collected convinced scientists that other people, and other people too, more and more scientists began to agree with Carson. People stopped using some of the most harmful pesticides and passed laws about where and when it was okay to use other pesticides. People began to pay more attention to how human activities affect ecosystems. Carson used evidence to change the way people think about ecosystems. Some scientists argue about a question for many years. They may disagree until they find new evidence or make a better tool that they can measure something that they couldn't measure before, or think of a better way to investigate the question. When scientists argue, it often means that they are in the process of figuring out something new. Scientists work together and change the way we see the world around us. As scientists get more evidence to support a claim, they begin to agree. Today, people remember Rachel Carson as a scientist who is brave enough to disagree. When she argued, she always supported her claims with evidence. She pushed the scientific community to pay closer attention to human effects on ecosystems. She also helped people around the world understand ecosystems better. Scientists today are all part of the same community. Scientists from different countries often work together on the same investigations. Scientists all over the world work together, read one another's writing, and meet to talk about their work. That means more chances to argue. Science is moving forward faster than ever because scientists work together and argue. Let's take a moment to look at the glossary. These are important words that need to be pointed out. Pause the video to get a closer look at some of these words. That concludes the reason or the reading of why do scientists argue?